Hello folks, how's it going? It's Peter here with BlackRock Business and today in QuickBooks Point of Sale, we are about to talk about closing your store and doing an end of day. Yes! You probably need to learn how to do this before your first day. Yeah, the first day that you have Point of Sale running and the first day of your store. Congratulations! You've got a store. All right, so you go through the day and you make some sales and it's great and you're having an awesome grand opening. But at the end of the day, when you're about to sweep up, you need to close out your QuickBooks point of sale. So you need to run end of day. It's a little procedure here. Uh, we got this button right here on the main screen called end of day. You can go there or you can go on the point of sale menu up here and go to the end of day procedure. Either way will work. And uh, I'm just gonna let you know before we proceed that I made one sale today to John Doe for $72.80. Remember that? Remember that number? Uh, that's kind of important because you'll see what that means in a little bit here. Now, we're gonna do end of day. It's gonna bring up this screen right here. And we've got three check marks. Personally, I'm gonna re recommend that you have all three check marks checked. Uh, number one is doing the report, which we're going to do in a moment. <clears throat> number two is backing up your point of sale data. Very important if you do that every day, it'd be great. Um, it's going to do it to the default location. There are some better alternatives. You can check out a different video of ours on doing backups. You probably want your backup to also be stored off of this computer somewhere. So check out our backup video about that. And then we've got exchanging the data with QuickBooks, and that's QuickBooks Accounting, QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Enterprise, QuickBooks Desktop. You want to do that because that sends over your sales data, as well as like vendor bills and receiving and inventory amounts uh, for, for your value. <clears throat> so that's very good. Ch having that checked is very good. Now, back up to the top here, we got a couple of drop-down menus that we're going to pay attention to. First one here. We have the X out status report, Z out drawer count, or Z out store close. Uh, these, all three of these do different things, so I want you to pay attention. X out status report, I don't know why they have that on this screen, because that's kind of just for checking at any time how your sales are doing um, and your cash drawer. I mean, it's if you want to run that at any time during the day, you can kind of see how many checks you have, how much cash you got, how, how many credit cards you took. It's just kind of an update status type check. And you can actually um, access that on the reports menu under cash drawer. So I don't know why somebody would do it here and have all of these other things going on at the same time. So yeah, kind of ignore that one for the moment. Check it out if you want on the reports menu. Number two here is the Z out drawer count. And this is what a lot of people are going to focus on. And let me tell you a little bit about it, some of the uh, little notes on it. Doing a Z out drawer count allows us to count all of the cash in the drawer and make sure that it matches your daily sales for cash. Makes sense. Uh, you can also, though, <clears throat> do this maybe like in between shift change let's say you've got a morning shift and an evening shift and if you would like to you can have the morning shift own their drawer and do a drop in the middle of the day and then have the evening shift own their drawer and do a drop at night as well and but what i mean by drop is taking the extra money out of the cash drawer and putting it in the bank bag in the back of the store um, for whenever you're going to go deposit your proceeds in the bank. So you can do that in the middle of the day if you'd like at shift change and at night. Uh, most stores that I encounter do this once. They do it at the end of the day. Maybe they don't have as many sales or maybe they don't have issues with trusting their employees. I don't know, whatever. However, um, that is a specific report to each workstation. If you have multiple workstations, two, three, five, whatever, you're gonna to wanna to do a drawer count 
on each and every station because each station has its own drawer, right? And if it doesn't, that's going to get real complicated. And then if you, so let, let's take that for a minute. If you have three workstations and you do a drawer count on each one and print out a drawer count and you have the drawer count and the drops for each and every station, then I would recommend after that is completed in your store that you would do a Z out store close on your main POS machine on the POS server. And that will be uh, <clears throat> a simple report that will include statistics from all the workstations. So you get to see an overview for your entire day doing the Z out store close on the main POS. And that's, like I said, that's with multiple workstations. Now, back to Z out drawer count. I have many, many customers who are just a simple little store and they just have one point of sale station or maybe they only have one point of sale station that's actually doing sales. Maybe they have one in the back for inventory, but maybe only one is actually a cash register. In that case, you probably don't really need the Z out store close. You can probably do the Z out drawer count if you have a single workstation, single cash register, and you'll be fine. So I'm gonna run through that one. The other one doesn't really have any options. It just prints out because it's an overview of everything. But this one's important because it's got the drawer count. Like I said, I made a $72.80 cash sale today. So I'm gonna do my Z out drawer count for today. Whatever you set these to, the next time you come through, it should automatically be on them. It kind of sets the default. All right, so I'm gonna actually tell this to show me the preview just so we can take a look at it. So we're gonna start our Z out drawer count. I'm going to say that today I started the drawer with $200 in it. And then just to be quick and easy, I'm going to go, I'm going to say, okay, we got two fifties. We got five twenties. And then I'm going to get fancy with it and say that I have uh, six tens, two fives, two ones. I'm just going off what I got uh, for this cash sale. Here. So three, let's see if I can do it real well. All right. So I made a cash sale for 72.80. So at the end of the day, when I count my drawer, you would think there'd be 272.80 in there, right? Yes. Um, now let's say there's three extra pennies for some reason. And I'm just going to throw that in there to show you what happens. So we got 272.83. Let's say OK. And I want to leave <clears throat> $200 for tomorrow so that we start the drawer tomorrow with exactly how much we started today. And maybe I say in here, as a, as a cashier that's closing, I say, hey, I, uh, for some reason I found uh, three extra pennies. So the deposit over here is the actual amount of money you're going to take out of the drawer. And what I usually say is, you know, you got a bank bag in the back or a safe or a vault or whatever. You can take the Z out report that gets printed out, wrap it around the cash and paper clip it for today. And then just keep putting that in the bank bag each day. And then maybe on Friday, you take the whole bank bag and you go to the bank and then you would record the deposits that automatically are showing up in QuickBooks accounting. That is uh, a subject for another time. When you go to the bank with the bank bag, you want to record deposits and QuickBooks accounting can actually print out a deposit slip that has every one of these amounts for every single day on it automatically. It's a great system because it's so automatic. You hardly have to do any work and then it records your deposits. It's great. Okay, now it's going to pop up and tell us that our count does not match the recorded payment amount. Your dollar count is three cents over. Do I wish to continue? So I can say no and I can go back and recount and see if my three pennies difference was an error. Or I can say yes and I can run the report without recounting. So there we go. Now I don't have a receipt printer hooked up to this computer so uh, it's confused on which template it should use. 
If I had already set up a receipt printer, it would automatically be on 40 column. And then letter size is for a full size printer if you want the Z out to come on, on a full size printer. But like I said, I recommend that you do it probably out of the receipt printer, wrap it around that cache and paper clip it. Makes a lot of sense. I can make a default template. I, I can say, yeah, I want this one every time. So I'm going to select that. Now, what it's doing here is remember that third check mark was talking about communicating with QuickBooks Financial. And that's what it's doing here. It's going to send over all the sales, vendors, customers, receipts, etc., for the whole day, all in one go. If you want, you can tell this to automatically close this window every time it completes successfully. It's probably what you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis because it'll be faster. Now it was compressing the backup, and now we finally see our Z out report. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Sales activity was 7280. There was tax, of course. We can see that there was one sale, no returns, no deposits, no reversals. The guy paid $80 and got some change back. And then we've got our drawer account. Of course, if you take checks and debit and credit cards, it'll actually list all of that out. There will be a few more sections on your ZL report has statistics for all of those. So there you go. There you have it. We have done an end of day report. We've counted our drawer. We are all done. It printed out the receipt printer. You put it in the bank peg. You are done for today. You can sweep up. You can go home. You can kick your feet up and just relax. All right. My name's Peter with BlackRock Business. I'm glad you came along with us today to figure out how to close your store. Oh, what a relief. Otherwise, check out the link below. We got some QuickBooks secrets for you. Uh, have a great day.